Hello, my name is Tyler Coles, founder of Ornithopter Games. In this micro talk, I'd like to introduce you to a programming framework I use called ReactiveX. And besides finding it in my games, you'll also find it in games such as Super Mario Run and Cat Quest. So at the very least, I'm not the only one that thinks this is a good idea. When introducing a framework, it's typical to see some contrived examples. I wanted to do one better by showing you real examples from Buff Mountain. In Buff Mountain, you play a lumberjack, running up a mountain, jumping, sliding, and chopping your way through obstacles to prove that you are the buffest lumberjack. And by the way, you can play Buff Mountain yourself. It's on the App Store and Google Play. Think of ReactiveX as a tool to help you structure your code. It implements the observer pattern, which you could call super fancy event handling. You have observables, which are sequences of events, and observers, which subscribe to and react to those events. And we typically illustrate these with uh, marble diagrams. So here's a basic marble diagram. We have an observable on top. Each event can carry some kind of data, in this case an integer. And then one or more observers comes along and subscribes with some kind of code that will be executed in response to each event. So what's ReactiveX good for? Coding in an event handling style can help you decouple systems, making them simpler. But ReactiveX takes that further by treating event streams as first-class citizens, which lets us combine and manipulate event streams in powerful ways. It's available in a lot of languages and adapted to Unity, especially under the name UniRx. So I don't want you to worry about how just yet in this talk. My goal is to inspire you with real-world examples of problem solving using ReactiveX. To give you an idea of how extensively I use it, in Buff Mountain's 200 or so main class files, UniRx is referenced in 44 of them. So let's see some examples. I like to have a global singleton as a hub for the important values and events in the game, like how much beard the player has, how many coins they've collected, or when the player takes a step. Game Logic elsewhere publishes events to these observables as appropriate. So now I can subscribe to them in order to drive other functionality, for example, UI. Here's a mono behavior that updates the coin display. On start, I subscribe to the coins observable with a bit of code that updates the UI text. Pretty simple. And I want you to take note of the add to call here. And I'm gonna come back to that later, but it is important to keep in mind. Here's another UI example. When we level up, but only when that level is greater than zero, I trigger the shout UI, which pops up some fun text at the bottom and then flies off. But notice the where operator, which acts to filter the level events. This is a hint of what makes ReactiveX special. Next, we'll look at a way to combine observables. This is a very important technique. By combining observables produced by separate systems, we get the functional benefits of the combination without co-involving the logic of those systems. Otherwise, the tendency is for code to become intermingled, and this is bad. In Buff Mountain, I have one system producing player state. It's a state machine involving player inputs. I have another system producing player hurt state. It uses Unity's collision detection. And a third system is responsible for animating the player character appropriately. It relies on the combination in the form of player animation state. The code for that is somewhat involved, but in diagram form, the combination works like this. Player state events tend to flow through, but when player hurt state is true, we want the hurt animation to take over, which may delay player state events. So this isn't a simple merge of two event streams. ReactiveX gives us the power to control the merge as needed. ReactiveX can also help us deal with sequences of events that may contain errors. Particularly, how do we recover from errors gracefully? You'll see this a lot with web services, or reading and writing to disk, for example. Buff Mountain uses a backend web service called PlayFab. And when the application starts, I want to log in the player. This can either succeed and complete, observables have the power to indicate the completion of a sequence, or it can fail and terminate with an error, uh, say maybe the network is down. Either way, the PlayFab ID observable now indicates whether or not the player is connected. Later, I want to access the item catalog, which is stored in PlayFab via its web API. So I start with my PlayFab ID observable, and chain an attempt to load from the PlayFab API. If that fails, I fall back to a copy I've stored on disk. And if that fails, I can always load from an asset, 
shipped from the game. And the code for that looks something like this. Take the PlayFab ID, continue with the API, fall back to the disk, and finally fall back to the asset. Now that becomes a new observable, which encapsulates this loading sequence and can easily be used elsewhere in the application. Uh, for example, on the character screen, we need to know the item catalog, which items you own, and your settings, all of which are observable values. I start by merging the requirements with the zip operator, take the first result only, time out if that takes too long, and on success, I can initialize the UI. On failure, I can show an error message. Okay, so that was a lot of ground to cover. Feel free to take a breath. But I hope that gives you some idea of the power of ReactiveX. At the same time, I don't want to leave you thinking that it's all roses either. There are, I suppose, a few warnings uh, that I would put on the package, and one of them has to do with that add to call that you see. ReactiveX requires you to manage the life cycle of observables and observers. Add to is one way to do that. It ties an observer to the life of a game object. This is a possible memory leak if you forget it, so it's important to remember. And also as a heads up, there are occasional Unity compiler annoyances to fight with. But the big warning here is that you are stepping into the realm of asynchronous programming. And this is a great power, great responsibility situation. And it means debugging can get tricky. Finally, make sure you understand the difference between hot and cold observables. Uh, you can read about that in the documentation, and it is a very important subject. So if I haven't scared you away at this point, here's how to learn more. Uh, the UniRx docs on GitHub are great. ReactiveX has a website chock full of marble diagrams, and I've written some articles that go into more detail, including the how. Uh, you can find those on ornithoptergames.com. Thank you.